Our souls magnify the Lord. Our spirits rejoice in God, our Savior. The Mighty One has done great things for us. Holy is God's name. Let us worship God. For God is our maker and our redeemer. From generation to generation, God gives mercy. Good morning. My name is Tom O'Brien, and I am blessed to serve Memorial Congregational Church as pastor and teacher. This morning, know that no matter who you are, no matter where you are physically, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. This morning is, we mark the fourth week of Advent, uh, the third week of Advent, the uh, week where we, we often look at the theme of joy, and a week where I like to delve in and look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. And so we listen to songs and we hear words based on her words and her songs. Good morning. My name is Beth Whitlock. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Dear God, please help us to see you in the endless lines of cars queuing up for food. Please help us to hear you in the shouts of protest from the oppressed and their allies. Please help us to taste and smell you in the crowded hospital rooms and hallways. Please help us to feel you in the cold air where the homeless sleep. We need your hope, dear God. We need your peace, dear God. We need your love, dear God. Please help us to experience your mysterious presence everywhere to embolden us to continue your work even in the oftentimes tedious, frightening, and unkind world. Please, God, help us to be surprised by your joy. Amen. Each Sunday, we renew our promises to one another and to God. If these words are unfamiliar to you, please feel free to listen. Please join me now as we recite together the covenant of Memorial Congregational Church. In the love of truth and in the spirit of Jesus, we unite for the worship of God and the service of humanity. And as the Lord's free people, we agree to walk together in all God's ways, made known or to be made known to us. The mystic Howard Thurman taught us that somewhere between the light and the darkness, there is a space that he called the luminous darkness. As the evening sky reveals the light of the moon, God's love is revealed in our lives. Sometimes fear surrounds us, sometimes there will be pain. But let the darkness heal you until only love remains. But let the darkness heal you until only love remains. God's love is revealed when we bring good news to the oppressed, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim liberty to captives, and release to prisoners. Throughout this darkest and holiest time of year, May we reflect God's love. Hope is a star that shines in the
everyone. My name is Miss Stephanie. I am the Minister of Youth and Families. I am so happy to be here this morning. Um, this past week, uh, we were told that we would have the opportunity to see the Northern Lights. Um, kids, do you all know what the Northern Lights are? They're really, really cool. It's this beautiful light show in the sky that happens up close to the North Pole. It's called the Aurora Borealis. Um, we were told that we had the opportunity to see it this week, but unfortunately, um, the storm and the weather didn't align the way the weather people thought it was going to, and we didn't get to see it. But I remember when I was a kid in New York getting to see the Northern Lights. So way up on the North Pole, these solar storms happen. So the sun creates this beautiful light show from all of its gas and particles in the dark night sky. Um, we've been talking about uh, the Christmas story during Advent, and we've talked about how the angels appear in the dark, dark night sky to the shepherds. And it was a little scary. And the angel said, do not be afraid. And there was this beautiful light and singing in the dark night sky um, that these shepherds listened to and they were told to follow the star. And we remember from earlier in our story, this angel came to Mary and came to Joseph. And the angel says, do not be afraid in each of these um, pieces of our story. There's this bright blinding light and this disruption in their normal world in the darkness, um, but they're not supposed to be afraid. They're supposed to be reassured that they are a blessing from God. And we wait in anticipation. Um, 12 more days. I know a lot of you are very excited and counting down for 12 more days for the arrival of Jesus, of this beautiful light in the night sky. Today's scripture reading comes from the chapter of, from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 27. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And it came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of God, the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her, and Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant, he has brought down the powerful from the thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever.
know, one of the reasons that I love Advent is because my wardrobe is all planned out. Purple on the first, second, and fourth Sunday, and pink on the third. I always get a little bit confused, and I think that this, this week is love when, it, when it's joy. But <clears throat> actually, the weeks of Advent are, are really um, just made up. Hope, love, and peace, and joy. No one really knows the, the order that they're supposed to be in. <clears throat> As the Reverend Mary Ludy pointed out in one of my clergy Facebook groups this week, there really is no traditional order. Unless, she says, you think back 30 or 40 years at best of a non-universal use constitutes a tradition. The assignment of love, peace, and hope to three of the four candles is a very recent thing, liturgically speaking, introduced mainly by liturgical supply and publishing companies, pushing their advent wreath products and trying to create a quasi-spiritual theological framework for ritual deficient Protestants. So joy, the third week, or the third candle, is the only tradition that, with roots in an older tradition. It started in the Middle Ages. This week is often called Gaudet Sunday for the Latin word Gaudet, which means rejoice. Now, the reading that Stephanie just shared with us doesn't actually appear every year. I just really like it, and I think it's important. So I've preached on it most third Sundays in Advent for the past few years. Last week, I preached on Isaiah 61 and talked about how Jesus' ministry was based on the teachings of the Hebrew prophets. <clears throat> Jesus' inclusive ministry of peace, love, and justice was based on Isaiah and others passing down writings, declaring that God calls us to proclaim good news to the poor, bind up the brokenhearted, proclaim freedom to captives, and release for prisoners. But where did Jesus learn about these ideas? We may think about Jesus coming out of the womb with a fully formed brain with complete understanding of what God intends for the world. But if we say that Jesus is God incarnate, then he must know everything he needs from the moment of birth, right? Well, I believe that the incarnation isn't a pick-and-choose menu. The incarnation is about being fully human. It's about experiencing everything that humans do in order to have a complete understanding of what it means to be human. So I believe that Jesus had to learn and be taught just like the rest of us. And who else would have been the one to teach him but his mother, Mary? Mary, who receives this message from an angel and responds with a song, a song that reflects what she has learned about her faith, a song that has echoes from a song by Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel, and Miriam, Moses' sister. These songs are rebellious and radical and revolutionary. These songs are about upending systems and disrupting the norm. These songs are about turning the world around. God will scatter the proud and bring down the powerful and send the rich away empty. An angel shows up to a young girl and tells her that God has great plans for her. And she responds, here I am. The angel tells her that the child will be named Jesus, which means God saves. She knew how important he was going to be. And she knew that it was her responsibility to give him the tools that he would need to fulfill his mission. And as her child grew, she taught Jesus the same ideas and concepts that she had learned and that were burned on her heart. Mary's revolutionary message becomes the basis of Jesus' radical love. And her song of justice echoed in his heart. And he knew a God that scatters the proud and brings down the powerful and sends the rich away empty. God has done great things for me, Mary says, so I will magnify God's name and God's message. Mary hears the call from the angel and she magnifies God in her teachings to Jesus. And her words get even louder through his ministry. 
One of the reasons that I preach this text every Advent is because it reminds us that Christmas is about listening to and believing women. The words of God have been magnified throughout the ages, from Miriam and Hannah and Mary, and from countless other women who male editors have attempted to silence for generations. So on this Godet Sunday, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, just as Mary's spirit did when she received incredible news and a seemingly impossible call. When God called, Mary simply said, Here I am. No matter what the song, no matter what the popular song asks, yes, Mary did know that her baby boy would walk on water and save our sons and daughters and all that other stuff. And when we find ourselves in time of trouble, Mother Mary comes to us saying, let it be. All right, that's actually about Paul McCartney's mom, but it applies here as well. Mary sings, my soul magnifies the Lord. And her words throughout her life magnified God's word and work. What can we do to magnify the Lord? What will you do to spread the radical message that everyone deserves food and shelter, that everyone deserves forgiveness and love, that the needs of all are more important than the wants of a few? I may constantly forget which week is love or peace or hope. Our traditions and our rituals will continue to keep changing. But the word that Mary sings will always be true. God's message will never change. Joy comes when there is a just world for all. Joy comes when we all play a part in co-creating God's intended world of peace and love and justice. Joy comes when the world turns around. So may we Hear God's call to be justice seekers. May we follow the same teachings that Jesus learned and magnified. And may the Holy Spirit give us joy to do all of this as we work together. Amen.
love that song. Would you please join me now in the spirit of prayer? Oh, holy God, we pray that our work and our word magnifies your work because you bring us joy. Our soul yearns for you, yearns for the day that you will bring, a day of justice and peace and love, a day when you will wipe away all of the tears. Holy One, we pray, we continue to pray during this time of pandemic for all of our medical staff, for their protection, and also for justice for them, that they are compensated for their time and their work, that they are given rest, that they are given the justice that they deserve. During this time of struggle with so many voices in our ears, we pray for your truth to win out. We pray that everyone understands the seriousness of this pandemic, that everyone understands that we are doing your work when we protect each other, when we love our neighbors by wearing a mask, by social distancing, by staying home when we can. During a turbulent time in our country, we pray that your truth wins out and that political violence goes away that people respect one another, respect the choices that have been made in this country, and that we learn to work together to take care of everyone in our country and in our world. Oh, holy God, be with us. Help us to turn the world around. Help us to turn this world into the world that you intend for all of us and for all of your creation. We are thankful, God, for the voices of Mary and Hannah and Miriam, for all of the women who have taught us so much through our generations, and for all of of the women who have worked tirelessly behind the scenes without the credit and who have lifted up so many in your name. We are thankful for all of the teachers and the prophets, the poets and the preachers who continue to magnify your message. We are especially thankful for Jesus Christ who taught us so much and who gave us words to pray when we don't have words of our own. We lift up his prayer to you now, praying together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. A few announcements to share with you. <clears throat> I'm so excited for this event this afternoon. At four o'clock, we'll gather at the Curtis Middle School parking lot for our drive-in carol sing and virtual concert. Part of the virtual concert will include the anthem that you just heard, 
a little bit modified, um, but there'll also be opportunities for everyone to, to sing along in the safety and comfort of their own cars, to sing along Christmas carols, and two versions of the Hallelujah Chorus from the Messiah. It's going to be a really, really wonderful event. Um, it looks like looks like there are lots of people in our community who are who are planning to be there, and we hope to see you there as well. Next Sunday will be our virtual Christmas pageant, starring many of the youth here at MCC, telling the the Christmas story in their own words. It's uh, it's really going to be a wonderful event, and I hope you continue to join us right here on Facebook Live um, for that as well. And on December 24th at 7 p.m., we will have our virtual Christmas Eve service, um, which will include a half-hour musical prelude uh, from the Sudbury Bell Ringers, and then um, other uh, story and scripture and song from many in our congregation. And we hope that you, you join us there as well. Next week, next Monday, we will um, read the next or discuss the next book in our book series, book discussions. This book is How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. And um, if you are interested in that, please send me an email at pastor at mccsudbury.com so that I, or at mccsudbury.org so that I know to uh, expect you and can send you the links that you are needed. Now we have a message from Gail Wright, uh, the chair of our stewardship committee. Hi, I'm Gail Wright. And this is one of the wise ones from my nativity scene, who's bringing a gift to honor baby Jesus. In the spring, when the pandemic was just beginning, we stepped out in faith and generously pledged to fully fund our ministries. Thank you. Now 2020 is coming to an end, but the pandemic continues and it continues to bring illness, fear, stress, loneliness, and economic hardship. And that's one of the reasons why I am personally so grateful that our ministries led by our staff have found ways to keep church going. Our inspiring music has been reinvented our education now comes through Zoom, videos, and creative new events. Our worship still leads and supports us, no matter how physically distant we all are, in ways that we couldn't have imagined even 10 months ago. And our caring ministries are in higher gear than ever, now through lots of driving, through food sorting, and all sorts of other new ways to meet our congregation's needs and the needs of our community and our wider world. But MCC Wise Ones, we need your gifts. What allows these ministries to continue is our staff and our staff needs to be paid. Please, dear Wise Ones, your gifts to MCC will show your gratitude and allow us to continue to live out our mission. And you don't have to deliver <coughs> your gift via donkey. On our website, there are lots of options. Or just send a check. Either way, thank you very much. As Gail says, there are lots of ways to um, donate to the church. You can go to mccsudbury.org slash donate, which will uh, let you know about these different options. And we are so grateful for everyone, for all of the ways that you contribute to the ministry of this church so that we can magnify God's message. And we give thanks for your gifts. We give thanks for all of the gifts that we receive. And we lift them up and we dedicate them to God. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that you have given us. In return, we offer up our gifts. We ask that you send the blessing over everything we receive today, everything we've received this week, and over us. Help us to use our gifts 
to magnify your message, to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. It's in his words that we pray. Our souls magnify the Lord. Our spirits rejoice in God, our Savior. The Mighty One has done great things for us. Holy is God's name. Now it's our turn to go out and to magnify God's message. Go out into the world, masked and socially distanced if you go physically, or go out virtually and spread the news, the good news of God's work of peace and love and justice. If necessary, use words. May the Lord bless you as you walk the way of Christ Jesus in thought, word, and deed. May Christ's life be yours now and always. Amen.